Hello and welcome to another great tutorial from Renderosity on Poser 11 and Poser Pro 11. I'm Mark Bremer and in this movie we will be working with one of the new lights in Poser, the Area Light. We'll be working with some atmospheric lighting and we'll be working with a completely new feature as well called caustic rendering, something we can do in the Superfly engine that you could not do before and creates very believable reflections from metals and light focusing as it goes through glass. Really cool stuff. I must mention this is an advanced tutorial. If you're new to the program, check out many of the free tutorials here on using Poser and learn how to get around the program because I'm skipping shortcuts and why I do some of the things I do. Those are covered in other tutorials. And also, for you more experienced users, there are two kinds of volumes in Poser now. The volumetric lighting, which we'll be looking at in the context of the Superfly render engine, and volume-based materials, like making little clouds, steam coming off of a cup of coffee or something. Those are handled with physical-based shaders, and there will be a tutorial coming up on that, but I don't get into those types of shader builds in this movie. All right, well, enough talk. Let's get into this and start working with the scene. The first thing I want to do is, well, destroy all these lights. I don't want to inherit any of the properties that these have, so bear with me while I kind of dump these out of the scene here and we start fresh and do a quick little comparison between say spotlights and our new area light. The first thing I want to do to make sure that uh, life is easy for me because I'm either lazy or efficient, I don't know which one, point at. I'm going to have the spotlight point at not Andy himself because it'll point at the center area. I want to make sure that uh, we get a good view of him all the time so I'm simply going to point this light at his right foot. And we see the light reset and now as I move the light around the scene we know that Andy will always be in the limelight. Now notice what's going on with the spotlight right here. Since it's aimed at his foot his head is dark. I can expand that cone of light but when we start working with atmospherics the one problem working with spotlights and that's the only way we really had to work with it or different types of point lights is that you see a very defined light beam as it goes through the atmosphere. The area light does not do that. So like in a photographer studio where you've got a soft box, it's one of those kind of fabric tents that has a strobe light inside of it, the area light gives very even, nice, soft, mottled light and it's a great way to work with it. So let me change this, come over here to uh, parameters, well let me actually make sure we've got the light selected and there we go scroll back up here area light new option under the property all the other lights have been there before and suddenly our character lights up so we've got the other little items down here very common to the other lights in how you work with uh, sampling and shadow sizes that type of thing I won't go over that here but now as I move the light around the scene you can get a good idea of what's going on it's like a super big diffused spotlight, but there's no defined edges or anything like that. It is just great for creating a sense of atmosphere. So let's do that, in fact. Let's add some atmosphere to this. I will come into the materials room since the light is selected right here. And let's launch a WACRO. Create atmosphere, nice little shortcut. And I'll say, I want smoky room. Now, something to be aware of that I haven't spoken of in the earlier movies about Superfly is that Superfly does not respect depth Q atmospheres. Just doesn't. But that's where this combination of area lights and smoky room settings can come in and really pick up the slack for that. So I'll choose smoky room. Choose OK. It just lets me know that if there's nothing in the scene, I won't be able to really tell what it's doing. That's OK. All right, let's do a quick render, or if I wanted, and this is always wise when you're working with Superfly, to open a ray trace preview because it gives you dynamic updates. So most of the time as you make changes, you don't have to go back in and do render after render after render. It just kind of updates here and gives you a good idea of what's going on. We can see it here. We've got some graininess going on in the atmosphere right now that is fixed by working in the render room a little bit and we'll go in and do that in just a second. Actually let me go ahead and uh, zoom in on our character here just a little bit. If I can. There, give ourselves something nicer to look at and this will update as well. Change the camera orientation there. Ah, much better. Okay. 
what we're seeing here is this nice diffuse quality and if we went ahead and say pull this over to a side back behind or something like that we'll let it update just it's tough to create this type of lighting any other way most other 3d programs have something like area lights it's just coming into the world of poser and you're going to love working with that so with that said if we were going to tune up this and make it a little less grainy let's pay a, a round trip here to the render room real quickly and we'll see exactly how as we make some of these changes what it does to our scene right here I am going to leave branched path tracing on and the reason for that is as we get into working with caustics here real briefly the uh, program really requires you to adjust some of these things independently if you don't have the branched path tracing enabled it kind of does everything at once and you can't change individual things like glossy samples which is important for glass metals that are reflecting light that type of thing so just know that the easiest way to change the screeniness is to increase the pixel samples know that it comes at the expense of render time if I go ahead and just update this to 6 and say uh, let's save the settings in theory this would auto refresh it's not happening now so I'll go ahead and hit the refresh button and it will engage some of those render settings and we'll see a little bit better presentation right here again this is a ray trace preview and not a full rendering so you can expect usually as you double the pixel samples and something with volumetrics no right off the bat working with volumetric atmospheres really increases your render time there's no way around that and as you increase the the pixel samples usually every time you double the pixel samples the render will take about four times longer than the previous one to complete so just a word to the wise don't uh, crank up all those settings or you'll kill your computer or die before the render completes just uh, know that so we can see we've got this atmosphere uh, taking place looks pretty good okay now that you've got a good idea of how this works and that we could add another light and create some fake bounce light and area light let's turn off the atmosphere so we don't have to keep dealing with that We have to do this in the materials room and I'm going to select the atmosphere to work with right here and you'll see why you don't really want to mess with this uh, you know building it manually quite a little bit of uh, work that goes into creating the fake clouds right here volume on we will turn volume off by simply disabling that little checkbox there yeah much easier to work with okay that said let's come back over here to the pose room and I'll back out just a little bit let's insert a prop into the scene and in this case let's work with something that would actually give us some nice caustics we'll do something for uh, some caustics that are reflected and then some that are refracted light going through objects so primitives sure enough let's uh, open that and we'll uh, do a ball here I'll go ahead and put in ball high res that comes in over here in the scene and we see that let me jump over here to parameters real quick and scoot that out of his feet X translate and let's hunt down a torus at least I think there's one in here somewhere the last place I go okay there we go and we'll pop that into the scene as well and I'm gonna leave this around his feet because I want to apply kind of a uh, shiny quality to it and we'll see how it interacts with his feet and works with it that way so let me come in here just a little bit and since we're in this view right now we'll go ahead and open back up the ray trace preview so we have that to work with simultaneously and add some materials in here come over here to our little uh, palette pop this thing open and let's go to basic materials and pick something like glass now here is one of the deals this is a personal uh, gripe of mine we've got these new abilities inside of poser to work with the fantastic superfly engine they didn't particularly create any new shaders for that does a pretty good job of importing the firefly shaders the reason I bring that up is because working like with this crystal ball and I drag this on to my little scene here we get the, the new drag and drop ability nice with the little yellow warning box the highlights are 
based on a texture. And I've covered this in another tutorial about working with eye highlights and how we can get rid of those. And since Superfly is a full ray trace render engine, it actually picks up things and does realistic reflections. So, yeah, just know that. For the metal here, let's come down to metals. And, oh, uh, sure. What looks good? Do we have anything that looks like chrome? That would be up by C's, right? Hmm, they taught me how to think like that in school. Yeah, let's go with uh, the gold ingot, gold polished, sure. And we'll drag that onto our torus and it turns yellow. Okay, nice. We see things starting to show down here. In the first movie, I think, or the second one on Poser 11, I talked about how to remove reflections, take those texture maps out, and let the program do what it actually does when you've got Superfly engaged and it's going through a full ray trace function. Just consult that movie in case you don't know how to do that so we don't spend time here doing it. We kind of see what's going on here with this update. And let me show you the difference now. I'm going to zoom in even a little bit tighter. And will this let me go ahead and change proportions a little bit? Yeah. Not going to give me a bigger window, though. Well, let's uh, play with some of these settings just a little bit. I'll raise that up. And let me bring this softbox actually in front and over to a side just a little bit so we can see a little bit better what's going on with caustics. I'm doing this to show a couple of things. One is there's two settings you want to work with when you're working with glossy objects. In order for caustics to work, you have to first turn it on. So to do that, we can come back to our render settings here. That capability inside of Superfly is over here. There's refractive caustics, which is when light goes through glass, like you know how the light will focus behind a glass ball, which is why I've got a glass ball in here, or if you've got a magnifying glass, you would turn that on like we will, and then there's reflective, and that's what's going on with the metal right here. So you don't have to have both. The reason you would have one enabled and not another is because, well, maybe there isn't anything glass in your scene, but it also saves the program from doing the calculation. So always, now that you're in Superfly with all these uh, nice little controls, don't immediately turn everything on and crank it up. It just takes forever to render that way. So with just refractive and reflective caustics on, I'm going to do save settings, not adjust a single thing. And I'll force the preview here to go ahead and take a look or update so we can take a look. You'll notice we're starting to get a lot more reflected light that is the same color as the torus itself in the gold. That's pretty cool. Let me go ahead and rotate in my scene here just a little bit. We'll look inside the character's feet. Uh, <laughs> we'll look at his feet inside the ring. And we'll see some of the same things going on. Now, here's where I want to come back to some of the render settings and how we affect this with the settings that we've got. We've got a really coarse type of uh, grit going on. There are two ways to work with that. And then we also have what I would call sparkles on top of the metal right here. Let's talk about how we fix that in the settings. Obviously, increasing pixel samples will improve that graininess. I'm going to bring that back down to 3 so that things do render a little bit faster for us. Here's where we would go ahead and change or increase things specific to this branched path tracing. In this case, glossy samples is set to 2. We can go ahead and increase this. If I bring it up to 4, that will help out a lot. We don't need to touch anything else right here. We've got some, some mesh lights going on, which is kind of how the area light works. I could increase this if I wanted to something like 4. But very important also is this filter for the glossy functions. So if you're getting sparkles, just bright little spots on glass or on metal, you can increase the glossy filter here. For the sake of argument, I'm going to bring this up to a level of 100 instead of 1 and click Save Settings. We'll force a refresh right here. And I'm doing this because it uh, is going to render a little bit faster maybe than doing a full out render. Although if it frustrates me, we'll do that real quick here. 
So we increase some settings and sure enough it's taking longer for things to happen. So let's go ahead and pop in and do a quick render based on that. We'll go ahead and see all the render squares uh, doing their thing here. It's still going to be a little bit grainy because we've got only three pixel samples going on, but let's look at the quality and clarity of what's going on in the metal. We can see that the program is spending a lot more time on the metal because we've changed the glossy settings and we've changed the filter settings. These bright spots out here, sparkles, we'll uh, go ahead and have to increase the reflective surface. It's reflecting a little bit off the floor to get those to go away and increase the samples here. I won't take your time to do that. But if we had a very focused spotlight in here, we would get a really tight little uh, pattern of light that's going on right here. Let me go ahead and move over to our little glass ball right here. You'll see since this is not a ray trace preview and our ray trace isn't updating, that we're not getting any caustics or focusing of light as it comes through here. Let me go ahead and rotate in our scene just a little bit so we can look at the side view right here. Now this is where you might want to use a more focused light like a spotlight to go ahead and make some of these uh, capabilities work a little bit more obviously when we've got the focused light. We've got a texture pattern on here which is actually kind of confusing this. It, you know, it looks okay, but it's not actually reflecting the environment around it. It's a hack. It's a trick that you do with CG. That's how that stuff works. So if we render this real quickly, we'll start to see a different character that uh, renders out a little bit more. I haven't changed any of the render settings, so our glossy filter is cranked up. We've got our shiny our glossy surface sampling cranked up. That's something I would go in and change real quick. Uh, and then we'd have to wait for a render, right? That's how that works. So know that any time we're using these high-end functions, the caustics, the atmospheres, that you will pay for that if you want a decent looking rendering in increased render times. So to increase this and make it a little bit better, let me uh, scroll here in our scene just a little bit. We'll do two at once and maybe back out just a little bit. Let me get rid of our ray trace preview so we can see this. If I take my area light, let's make sure that's selected, come to properties, and turn it into a spotlight. Remember how I had it focused at the character's feet? We could go ahead and narrow this a little bit more. I won't necessarily do that. Let's open the render settings real quick increase the pixel samples to something like 10. And for our glossy samples, I'm going to go ahead and increase that to something like 10. Our glossy filter is already at 100%. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there right now. And I don't need to worry about the mesh lights. There aren't any right now. I'll bring that back down to 2, which is where it was. And choose render. This kicks off and it will finish in just a second, thanks to the miracle of video editing. All right, our render is starting to wrap up right here. Let's look at what's working well in this render, and let's look at what's not working well, and decide whether it's a good decision to use this feature or not. It really kind of depends on the scene. One thing that you can do with the caustics that's uh, just cool is that we can see right here in the shadow area behind the character, because of the shape, the light is hitting it, and since it's curved, it's actually focusing the light right here in the shadow area. You can tell it's still a little bit grainy, which means that in order to get this clean, we're going to have to increase the pixel samples to do that. We've done pretty well on the surfaces right here in terms of their fidelity, their kind of softness and believability in terms of reflection. However, we still have, yeah, some of the little sparkles in the background here and in the shadow areas it's not as smooth maybe as it could be. This is fixable, it just takes time and increased pixel sampling uh, settings as well. We can also see how the light is focusing on the character's foot right here. It's just some some features that bring an additional level of reality to your scene that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. However, it does come at some render time expense and we can see the uh, the glass is still doing its thing over here. I did not delete the texture maps off this glass ball, so we're getting some kind of false reflections. 
but we can also see how the light is getting focused right here because of the reflective caustics that are going on just like here and the refractive caustics the light that would go through and focus a little point back here is being obscured a little bit because of the texture maps so it always becomes a trade-off how much time do you want the program to spend uh, faking it versus doing the real thing and doing the math to get those reflections in place so just as a recap note that uh, as we get into these high-end functions the atmosphere that we add since the Superfly render engine does not respect the depth queuing you can get the same effect using one or two area lights and a smoky room type of effect and when it comes to tuning up the render settings to get caustics to work after you engage it be prepared to do a little less you know testing on it you can always go with any of the presets that also happen to be in the render settings and just go down and say hey I want the, the max settings not worry about finessing it the caveat being that when you do that your render will look great but uh, you may have a little more efficient render if you just tweak and wiggle those settings a little bit by yourself and those settings I'm talking about are right here for presets under the Superfly that we've got uh, many to choose from here if you choose to experiment with that. So that's working with the caustics and atmospheres and area light inside of Poser 11.